What's up guys? I hope that you are doing absolutely great. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I converted my garage into my brand new unleashed drum studio. I'm going to cover the materials, the construction, and the strategies I used to create a great sounding quiet studio. Leave your questions about the build in the comments and I will make a follow up video answering your questions. The process is coming up. Day one of the build is a beautiful morning in Southern California. And here's what I'm working with guys, a garage from the 1960s. There is certainly a lot to be desired, but I'm gonna see if we can turn this into an absolutely great sounding drum recording and teaching facility. One good thing acoustically is that it has a concrete slab for a floor, which is separate from the house. And another good thing that's gonna be good is if we can bring up the ceiling, instead of these low hanging rafters, if we can bring the ceiling all the way up to the roof, which is gonna give us more volume for better acoustics. First big project, I got HVAC guys outside right now, is removing the furnace and actually moving it to the attic. Day two and our second big project is to delete the water tank and replace it with a tankless water heater on the outside of the building. Again, just like the furnace, this is to free up this space for more room and also better acoustics. Jose is an awesome plumber. He did a great job on this project. Day three of the build and the HVAC guys are back. Due to technical reasons, they had to reschedule uh, moving to the furnace up to the attic. But you know, sometimes things don't go exactly as you hope, no big deal. The good news is, is the furnace and the water heater have been deleted. But what are we gonna do about that huge indent in the middle of the room? Day four of the build, the water heater and furnace have been deleted, but I'm left with this huge unused dual vanity that is extremely heavy. So what the hell am I gonna do with that? Well, you're looking at it. I used all my body weight to drag it to the street. Luckily that worked out. All right, so everything's cleaned up and the garage is now ready to start demolition. Before my three-man crew arrived, I thought I'd try to do some demolition myself. Um, I'm just working on one small piece of one corner of the garage, and as you can see, it's taken a long time. So this actually ended up being a lot more difficult than I expected. But hey, I gave it a shot. My first materials arrived today as well. These are the steel hat channels, which are part of the sound isolation system. Day five is here and it is demolition day. I got the ball rolling on my own, but in a minute, my chief of construction, Javier, and his two-man crew are gonna show up and here they are. These guys are so talented and have so much experience doing residential and commercial construction. I could not have done this job without them. Although, at one point, I thought I could. All right, the demo begins. Now you're gonna see that big indent on the left being deleted. And that is actually a closet for one of the guest bedrooms. See ya. This was a hidden gem behind the walls. It was a pest control slip from 1963. And the demolition is done. And it's pretty clean. Look at all this waste. Four out of six dumpster bags almost full already. Day six, and this is our most action-packed day so far. This is entering through the deleted closet which I thought about keeping as a uh, secret door, but of course that wouldn't work for sound isolation. And introducing Catsy Jr. All right, we have a little bit more demo to do. A couple odds and ends that were left in day five. But not too much. 
check out these huge power lines. They actually bring power in from the street to the rest of the house, but they're hanging right in the middle of my space, and I'm trying to raise the ceilings up as much as possible. We did discover one problem, which is right here. The interior drywall does not continue up all the way to the roof. So we started construction, which is awesome, and the first thing we had to do was something we weren't expected to do, which is drywall the interior of the attic. All right, more materials. Here's our, our lumber, and we have to actually get more later, but I really thought that was gonna be enough. And then here is our um, automatic leveling cement to uh, smooth and level the floor. So they're gonna do a double rafter on every single beam to really strengthen that. And this is our great electrician, Benny. Um, this whole day he's been working as well, um, and all, all over the house on many different projects. Check out this freestyle skill. He doesn't need a miter saw. Okay, so you can see how all of the rafters are doubled now, and so then the next step was to add collar ties all across the ceiling. So the ceiling's not gonna go right to the point, it's gonna be flattened out right before the point. But you see how that comes in handy later. But yes, this really adds a huge amount of strength to the ceiling and to the walls um, because the isolation system is very heavy. Today is all about the electricians. Look how great all of the wires they're running fit into the collar ties. It's a great conduit for it. That really worked out well. Okay, so over here we have the three dedicated 20 amp circuits, each independent from each other, and those are for the studio for best sound quality. We have a ton to get done today so that the carpenters can come back tomorrow and keep working. Just trying to get everything pre-wired is the main goal today. Final connections tomorrow morning. And all of those old power lines that look nasty are about to be removed. Catsy Jr. approves. And here we go, all of the old power lines are removed. Look how much cleaner that is. All the new lines just go right up in that ceiling conduit, which works great. Day eight started early with the electricians, and then the carpenters started back up with their work. And the electricians are now just finishing up the wiring to the panel. We're starting to lay the foundation for the outer double doors inside these guys have patched every single hole in the building structure more materials we have some uh, floats for the floor there we have some uh, green glue amongst other things those are the hat channels from earlier the iso clips are actually the key to the whole sound reduction system green glue is overrated sorry guys all right laying the concrete and the nice frame that he made that's the foundation for the double doors. And on the inside, we have framed in and drywalled the hole that used to be the deleted closet door. Here's more of the framing of the double doors. Really cool how these guys did this. I learned so much watching them. There's the completed frame. And my first time cement carving, a little surprise for my wife. All right, back to the inside, and they're still working on the drywall in the attic, which is just a ridiculously hard project. Probably the hardest thing in the whole build. All right, the end of the day. Pretty big day, and these guys always leave the entire work site clean, which is just wonderful. Really shows how professional they are in my book. And as you can see, the space is really starting to open up. Plenty of room. And my project after those guys left every day was to just walk around and find holes and cracks and fill them with sealant. Day nine, and this is one of the biggest days of the build. These are the 
sound isolation clips that decouple the new walls from the old walls. And these are the hat channels. The hat channels get mounted and clip into the isolation clips. It seems that I have a never ending project of sealing every hole and crack. You can't let any air get out. And here's me in my uh, Wild West days. The isolation clips and the hat channels go on the walls and the ceiling. And we got a nice delivery of materials here. This is our drywall and our rock wool soundproofing insulation. Drywall delivery. Think we got enough? Yeah, we definitely had a ton, but we still needed to get more about a week later. Yep, put most of it in the garage because we're about to seal the garage door. And now the uh, installation begins of the rock wall. Also today, we had a nice delivery here, two heavy duty double doors and two custom made panes of glass. One of my all time favorites. Lunch break. Salsa and beer. Luckily the guys loved it as well. Checking out some patches for the deleted vents on the roof. And the rock wool actually installs pretty quickly and it's a great material that doesn't um, cut up your hands like fiberglass materials do. As you can see, there are a ton of isolation clips on the ceiling. That's to hold the very heavy weight of the system. A little bit more work on that uh, attic, but we finally got it sealed. That was such a big project. Well, this is the end of a great week of work. And as you can see, we have many of the hat channels up, all of the isolation clips are up, and we have about half of the rock wall is installed. Looking forward to the weekend. It's Monday morning, day 10, and we have, in the first few hours of the day, finished most of the insulation on the walls and we are now locking down and sealing the garage door and then these guys built a brand new uh, structural frame. We decided to add drywall squares to all of the garage door to give it more mass. All right, all of the insulation is now done and we are now finishing the ISO clips and the hat channels. So this is pretty exciting. We're getting close to uh, being ready for drywall, which is our goal, is to be ready for drywall by the end of today. Only a few channels left. Here we go, the finished product. All of the insulation is done, all of the ISO clips are mounted, all of the hat channels are clipped in. We are done by 5 p.m. this day and we are ready for drywall tomorrow. It's gonna start looking like a real room. Day 11 and it is drywall day. At this point, 8 a.m., they've already been working, I think, for an hour. We started with the ceiling. Next, on a break from the ceiling, we remove the 1960s glass from the window frame. This glass was super thin and did not insulate sound at all. So again, we're doing the ceiling first, and this is very difficult work directly above their heads. I mean, of course, the drywall was heavy to put up there and hold in position, and then constantly reaching up to screw it in it was pretty rough. Meanwhile, I uh, continued my project, um, this time with the double door frame. I uh, sealed everything, every crack with uh, sealant, and I stuffed all the openings with the rock wool. 
Yeah, no kidding. Three layers of drywall definitely equals three times the work and of course three times the time. But by the end of the day, the ceiling was completely done and this first wall was almost completely done with three layers. That's the old garage door wall. And yeah, there's not enough drywall left, we realize, even though we ordered a huge amount. And there's the ceiling, completely done, three layers of drywall, and of course all those cracks will get sealed. Day 12, and our primary goal is to get all of the drywall finished. These guys are already off to a good start this morning. I got my first painting project. This is for the interior of the double glass window. And if you're into painting, that color is actually called Space Black. And here is the uh, mounting of the outer piece of glass. Each piece of glass weighs 105 pounds. The glass, as you might imagine, has to be cleaned extremely well before you mount the second piece of glass. And here we are, the drywall is finished. Thankfully, gratefully, these guys are doing such a great job. And just remember, this is three layers thick on every wall and the ceiling. It's also noteworthy that no seams have been allowed to double up. They're all overlapped. Here's the uh, finished window, just the outer glass and the inner black frame. My a &F hat is hanging in there. Day 13, guys. Our goal is to finish the doors and the windows. And here's the second piece of glass going in, but I had to clean the insides thoroughly of both pieces of glass because once they're sealed shut, you can't open them. You don't want any smudges before they put it behind the window. I gotta tell you, it was really challenging to get both pieces perfectly clean. And now they're gonna seal it up. Garbage day. I've had, you know, couple weeks with these dumpster bags in my driveway. Such a relief to get a few of them out of here. You can see that four of the bags are just overflowing. Each bag weighed about 3,000 pounds. Was, but that crane is rated to lift up to, I think, 12,000 pounds. It's crazy. Double windows are finished. And here's a good example of the green glue. It's best suited for the widest gaps. Both doors and all the hardware have been installed. I now call this area the airlock. And great news guys, the room is quiet. So thankful. Days 14, 15, and 16 go by pretty quick. Here we have sealed the outside of the airlock. And I continue with my big project of uh, using green glue to fill all large gaps, especially between the floor and the walls. And for the interior of the airlock, I used mostly regular sealant because there were smaller gaps to fill. On to day 15, a Saturday. My oak table has arrived. This is my first time staining wood and it's still wet in this picture, but it turned out pretty well. And the first day of drywall taping is done. This covers and smooths all of the seams. It also made a big difference sonically. All right, so now we're on day 16, and this is air conditioner day. These are my HVAC guys installing a ductless mini split made by Mitsubishi, who makes the quietest models on the market. Here is the finished installation on the outside. And this is now the complete second day of drywall sanding and everything is absolutely smooth now. 
really tightens up the sound in the room. It was really an incredible difference. But super dusty. Day 17 and 18, my ceiling continues. But our main goal today is painting. This is the base coat primer on all of the walls and ceiling. And my job today is to paint all of my face panels for my base traps. And my favorite space black color is back, the same as the interior of the double window. The exterior stucco is now complete and this will lighten up to be white. And I've chosen a custom dove white paint for the east and west walls and the ceiling. Last day of materials delivery. And here we have some lumber, we have some baseboards, and we have some wall panels. The lumber is for me to construct my base traps with. After making my measurements, measure twice, cut once, making the frame pieces. There's the short side and the long side pieces for the base traps. Here is the specifically designed for sound rock wool. Here is the black burlap fabric. And there is my uh, cat, Catsy Jr., managing my operations. And here's what they look before I staple the fabric down to the wood with the insulation on the inside of the frame. These are all the frames I finished this day, and I had to make a few more down the road. Days 19 and 20, these are the last days of construction. I added rock wool to all my frames while well, they're working in the garage. And they are working on leveling and repairing the concrete slab. This is my favorite. Javier is actually the first person to ever drum in my studio. I love it. And the first accent wall is finished. And why have one accent wall when you can have two? Now they are starting to lay down the oak wood floor. In the meantime, I'm out back finishing up 12 of my base traps. The oak floor is almost finished, which is the final step of the construction process. It's powerful stuff for me. After all this, we did it. These are the last five days of putting my studio together before I start working full time. My lovely wife Bridget helped me run chalk lines and make measurements uh, for how and where to hang the base traps. And my ANF Black Club kick is the centerpiece of the room. Finally, getting rid of the last two dumpster bags. I cannot tell you how nice it is to have my driveway back. These guys are installing the custom blind for that window. I chose to run external power boxes versus built into the wall because each internal power box is a way for sound to leak. These guys were always cracking jokes and having a great time. Really great work. My manager approves. Okay, so things are continuing to get more refined. I have my students' drum set set up. Um, that's where they play, which is super fun for them. As you might imagine, it's a, it's a slow and big uh, project, but uh, I just keep bringing more things in and then getting more and more organized, figuring out where I want to put everything. By the end of this day, I had hung my first 19 base traps, including four bottom corner traps. Eventually, there will be a total of 28 traps 
that make the room sound ideal. All right, now this is a point where we're almost ready to, to go back to work. Drum set is fully mic'd up. It sounds really good in here, but I'm still waiting for four custom-made corner traps. And I'm ready to start taking my first students in just a couple days. All right, the fifth day, this is the last day before I'm ready to work officially. Used it to hang the ceiling traps. But again, I'm still waiting for those four corner traps that are gonna come in a few weeks. The room is very functional. It sounds fantastic. It is very tight, controlled, yet energetic at the same time, which was my goal. And once I add the last four corner traps in a few weeks, um, it's even that much tighter. And that TV is how I run Pro Tools remotely from my drum set. The room is sounding great. It's taken 25 working days to get here. I am so thankful that it all worked out in the end. This is the biggest project that I've ever personally managed. It was a ton of fun. It was a ton of long days, and I learned more than I've ever learned in a 25-day period. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in and going on this journey with me to build the new Unleashed Drum Studio in 2021. <laughs>